Okay, so welcome back, everybody. In this module, we're going to be talking about multinomial logit regressions. In the last module, you'll remember that we began talking about how to fit a logit regression where we have a binary outcome variable, a 0, 1. And this time, essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be extending that logit model for instances in which we still have a categorical variable but that categorical variable has more than two categories, so three or more. But before we jump into that, I just briefly want to talk about the setup of the logic regression that we went over last time, because that's going to be really critical for your understanding of how to extend that for multiple categories. So if you remember correctly, when we're predicting the likelihood that an event has occurred given some covariate. So if you remember last time we were talking about the onset of coronary heart disease and using age as our main predictor. So here in the numerator we have the probability of having CHD given some value of age over the probability of not having CHD given that age. And we can express that with the logged odds or we can express that with our linear model. And the way that we can interpret these two things is that, at least with regard to our estimated beta or our estimated intercept, when x equals 0, the odds that y equals 1 versus the baseline of y equals 0 are expected to be the exponent of beta naught. So if it was the log odds, it would literally just be beta naught. And then with regard to our slope, or beta 1, when age, or x, increases by one unit, the odds that someone is going to have CHD versus not having CHD are expected to multiply by a factor of that exponentiated beta 1. So this is important because we're going to still have that same interpretation in our multinomial framework. Now, if you're not comfortable with this, please stop and take a look at the end of the slides. Click on this button. It'll go over and review the key essential parts of the logistic regression estimate. But the, key, the main question that we're going to have here at the beginning part is, how do we move from this framework that we already understand about logit regression to a more complicated framework where we have more than two categories? So simply suppose that you have an outcome category that's 1, 2, or 3. The case that we're going to be talking about later on in the module is going to be increase as 3, no change as 2, and decrease as 1. But for our sake in this module, they don't have to be ordered. So don't necessarily think that 1, 2, 3 is increasing intensity. These can just be options. So maybe we're running a survey for a uh, some advertising agency, and we want to know uh, what color people prefer. So they could prefer red, blue, or green. Again, these don't have to be ordered. When we express this, we're going to say that the outcome Y has three, four categories. Whatever that is is going to be K, so long as we have more than two categories. Again, because otherwise we're just running a basic logistic regression. Now, when we write out the probabilities of each person falling in each category, we're going to express this as the probability that the outcome category is in the first one is P sub 1. And all of these categories' probabilities then have to sum to 1, correct? So you can imagine, right, if I'm not in the first category and I'm not in the second category, then I have to be in the third category. So we can express this then with the baseline category being 1. We're essentially going to be doing two logistic regressions where we compare increasing to 1 or no change and decreasing to 1 or no change. And again, we're going to express this in log odds. So the probability that person I or observation I is falling into category 2 over the probability that observation i is falling into category 1 is going to be expressed 
with beta naught 2. Again, this is expressing the comparison between 1 and 2. And then we're also going to have an estimated slope with whatever our covariate is here. And we can do the exact same thing with the probability of falling into outcome category 3.